Okay, welcome back. Uh, up to this point, we have been studying motion graphs. But today, I'd like to take a look at the equations for these motion graphs. So obviously, for uh, constant velocity is the easiest one to look at. And we have our, uh, our dt graph. And it might look something like this. And this might be di for initial position. And it's, it's, a, it's a constant velocity, so our velocity graph is going to look like this. Okay, um, this, the slope here, we could say is v naught. So this would be v naught. And of course, the acceleration in this situation uh, would be zero. So if I change colors for that, you know, when I it's kind of hard to see if I use the same color, but it's essentially, it's at zero. Now, what are the equations of these lines? Well, this one, we know the equation to. We would say acceleration equals zero. That's very straightforward. We also know the equation of this line. We could say V equals V naught, whatever that is. It's some constant value. The equation for this line is slightly different. We can get this one a number of ways, but let's get it from the definition of the slope. And the definition of the slope is rise over run. So that means the rise is delta d over the run, which is delta t. So this equation for slope comes from the definition of slope. Okay, definition of slope is rise over run. And that's the rate of change of the position. Now when we rearrange this equation, we get delta d equals v naught delta t, but we can change, we can get rid of delta t because t is elapsed time. Okay. Uh, elapsed time, we don't need to write delta t, so we can rewrite this equation as v naught t. And then we can expand on delta d and we can say df equals v naught t plus di, separating, right? separating um, delta d into df minus di. So when we do that, we take the negative di to the other side, and we get, it becomes a positive di. So this equation is really the only equation, and it pertains to the uh, dt graph. The other ones, this one, it's not really an equation you know, nothing to be memorized or anything. It's just constant value. And this is even simpler being zero. So we now have an equation for every graph in this situation. So let's move on now to the constant acceleration situation. Now, constant acceleration, that, so what we just finished was constant velocity. But constant acceleration, um, you might say, well, are we going to deal with anything where we don't have constant acceleration? What about changing acceleration? So we, that's actually beyond the scope of this course. Uh, but what I will mention is, I will kind of give you a example of changing acceleration, which we're not going to 
analyze. Example of changing acceleration. So in this case, the classic one is a rocket. And there is a thrust force. And the thrust force is a constant force. But also, there's a mass involved, and that's the mass of the rocket. But rockets are, in reality, the mass of the rocket is mainly made up of fuel. So as the rocket produces this constant thrust force from the engines that are, that are throwing mass in the opposite direction, which is fuel, at high velocity, uh, it causes the rocket to go in the opposite direction. And usually, you're fighting gravity to get the rocket uh, into space. But this fuel, as the rocket flies, will become less and less. And therefore, the mass of the rocket will become less and less. So essentially, you have a thrust force that is a constant thrust force with a mass that keeps decreasing. This will create, I know we haven't gone over the physics of this yet, we're not there in the, in the course yet. However, this situation does produce changing acceleration. Now, we're not gonna study this right now, and in fact, we won't study this in this course, but I just wanted to bring it up to kind of remind us that changing acceleration does occur but we are not going to study it. We're only going to be studying constant acceleration. So what does constant acceleration look like? Well, again, we have our three graphs. We have our dt. And I'm going to draw it here, starting from here. And it's going to look like that. It's going to be a curve. This position is going to be di, or initial position. And then we're going to have our v. And let's even, let's put the, let's put the v there. And that's a straight line. And that's going to be vi. That's our initial velocity. And I'm, not, I'm specifically not doing zero initial condition graphs because it'll be clear uh, why, because I want to do the general formula. And then finally, uh, we're going to have our AT. And in this case, it's just going to be a flat horizontal line. And we can call that A0. OK? And let's put the t here, because that's time. So what we're going to do now is let's see if we can write the equations for these graphs. So the easiest one, obviously, is acceleration. And we could say acceleration equals a0, which is whatever that constant value is. Now the next one up, now we know that this is a straight line. And we actually already know the equation of this, but let's try and derive it. And the way we're going to try and derive this is through a little bit of calculus. Now, I know that when I say that word, some students start to feel fear because they feel that calculus is difficult. But in actuality, calculus, at least the calculus for this type of physics, is very straightforward and easy. Um, so let's, first of all, there's kind of like two parts to calculus. There's what's called derivatives and integrals. In this example, we're going to do integration first, and we're going to go in this direction up. And we need to integrate in order to do that. And what we're doing here with calculus is we're trying to find a formula for the v versus t graph 
that describes this graph and specifically from a calculus perspective what we're doing is is if I take a time and I calculate the in order to calculate this area that area here that area is equal to the change in the velocity so if I have the initial velocity I can calculate the final velocity because I know that this area is equal to the change in the velocity so the question now is how do I get a formula that describes this the area in the graph below so in order to do this we need to have an integration rule and the rule states that when we write the equation we add one to the exponent and to the exponent of what to the exponent of the to the exponent of t or the horizontal uh, axis so let's put exponent of t and then add the initial value of the graph above so this is this is this is uh, a very basic rule on how to integrate and this will provide us so at this point you're probably wondering uh, uh, what do you mean by all this so let's let's give you an example here let's take this equation a equals a naught and let's integrate it and we'll get what we'll get is we should get vf and when we add the initial the delta will be taken care of so in, in, in essence I mean, maybe if I, if I did it like this, if I went A equals A naught, and then we'll say delta V equals the area underneath this. Well, how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need to re rewrite this equation where we need to have a T in there because there's no T here. If you're wondering what I keep saying not, um, uh, I believe it's spelt so whenever you put a, 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 a sub zero a subscript zero it's like uh, n-a-u-g-h-t so it's pronounced not and what it means is that some usually it means like it's it's, it's an it can be an initial value but in this case, what I'm referring to it as is that this variable, or sorry, I should say that um, is not a variable. It is a value. It's a value, not a variable. So, so in this case, this A is the variable, and this guy is a value. So it could be anything. A naught could be some value but it's a constant value okay it'll say I say it's a constant value whereas this a is 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 this one okay so you can see here a naught I put where the line is that's what I mean by the the subscript zero there when I say not sometimes in physics they refer to it as an initial value but I'm not using it that way I just want it to represent a value but let's get back to the calculus. The question now is, I need this. I need this time in this equation, but there isn't one. So how can I write A equals A naught and put a T in there? And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be a little tricky 
and write t to the power of 0. Now, what is any number to the power of 0? So anything like x to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. So, so what this means now is that this equation to the pa t to the power of 0 is exactly the same as a equals a naught. The t to the power of 0 is just a 1. But what it allows me to do now is that I can now apply my rule, which says add 1 to the exponent of t. Um, and then, wait, I actually forgot a, um, a part of it. So my apologies. It should be add 1 to the exponent uh, of t and divide by that number. Then add initial value. OK? So I actually forgot to put that in there. Uh, now, let's try it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that guy and I'm going to say a equals uh, but now I'm not going to start with a because I'm going to write down the equation of the equation above. So I'm going to go back to this equation here, the v. So let's let's start again. And let's start from the top. I know this is getting a little messy here. So let's start again. Let's go a equals a naught. That turns into, let's pull it up a bit. That turns into a equals a naught times t to the power of 0. Now I apply my rule where I add 1 to the exponent of t and divide by it. And the equation now changes. I can say delta v equals a naught t to the power. So 0 plus 1 is 1 divided by 1. And now I'm done. Now if you want to change this equation and add the constant value, now I can change it to this. I can say v final equals a naught t to the power of 1 divided by 1 plus vi. Notice that this plus vi is the add the initial value. That's this part. But if you don't want to do that, you can just say delta v, and that's, that'll include that. Remember, because delta v was uh, v final minus v initial. So essentially now I can pick this guy up and take it to the other side, which is what I have here. But it's up to you which way you want to do it. Um, but there is something that I'm, I'd like to fix here, and that is you never really express an equation where you have a power to the power of 1. And also, dividing by 1 is superfluous. It's unnecessary. So I can change this to this. The power of 1 is implicit. Dividing by 1 doesn't change anything. And so here is my final equation using the power of integration. Now, if you'll take a look at this, is it's exactly the same equation as this. Vf equals at, well in this case, plus vi. That's supposed to be a naught here. Okay? We can ignore the naught for now and just say it's at plus vi. Okay? So now we know that a is the slope here. That's the equation of a straight line, like y equals mx plus b. Right? This is the y-intercept. This is the slope. Perfect. Well, did we have to use calculus to, cal to figure that out? Not really, but it's handy to be able to do that. Okay. Again, I want you to understand this equation is the same as this one. These two are equal. Okay. I've just expanded on the delta v. However, 
Now the cool thing is, is I can take this one step further. I can now remember what my dt looked like. It was like this. And remember what my t looked like. It was, or my vt looked like this. I can now take the equation for my v, which is right up here, and I can now integrate it. So let's just write it one more time. I can now integrate it using my integration rule to get the equation for the dt graph above. So all I have to do is say, all right, delta d equals, and now what I do is I apply my rule. In this case, t, it's a t to the power of 1, and that's implicit. And I add 1, and I get t to the power of 2, and I, do, I now divide by it. So I've now integrated the first term. I have to do the, second to the, the same thing to the second term. Plus, now you might say, wait a minute, there's no t here. Again, we can simply recognize that vi is the same as vi with t to the power of 0. So if I integrated this, it would be vi with t to the power of 1 divided by 1. Well, now guess what? t to the power of 1 divided by 1, again, it's unnecessary to write that because it's the same. So I can say delta d equals a t squared over 2 plus v i t. And that's the same as the equation above. And now, you know, this I've essentially I've done integration going from here to here, but I can rewrite this now instead of saying um, delta d, I can write it as df equals a t squared divided by 2 plus v i t plus d i. So if you go back to all the way back to my rule, which is, looks kind of messy now, add 1 to the exponent of t and divide by that number, then add the initial value. That's to get your final position or to get your final value. You see, if you don't add the, the initial position, you end up with this, which just means that the area becomes the delta. So now this equation here, df equals that one right there, is that describes this where di is right there. And if you look at this, this has a t squared term and a t term. This is actually a quadratic. And in fact, it, if you draw this out, this represents a parabola, or at least a portion of the parabola. So we've now derived the equation for all three of them. So once again, let's do the whole thing in one step, just to review one last time. And let's do the Let's start from here. Let's say a equals a. And we, and we recognize that this is t to the power of 0. And we, when we integrate this, we get the next um, equation, which is delta v equals a uh, hold on a sec. Okay, so from here, let's add 1 to the power of t, which makes it t to the power of 1 divided by 1. Okay, so this ends up being delta v equals a t. And now I can expand the delta v to be delta v minus v i equals a t. And then I can say v final equals a t plus v i. So this now is the equation of my VT graph. And remember, um, the reason why I am, the, the part that might seem magical to you, and I'll maybe do this with a different color, is this. 
how am I changing this a into a delta v? Because the right side of this equation looks like I'm applying the integration rule, but what am I doing to the left-hand side? So the left-hand side, what I'm doing is I'm recognizing that if this is my AT graph, then this area here is equal to the change, and this is my VT, that area is equal to my delta V, the change in the graph above. So essentially, when I apply the integration rule to this side, what I'm actually doing there is I'm calculating the area, the, a function that represents the area underneath that graph. And so when I go like, from here to here, what I'm doing is I'm recognizing that that when I calculate that area, that area now is my delta V. So I write down delta V instead of saying area equals. Okay? Because remember, as you go up this way, it's it's the change. So um, essentially, I'm calculating the change in the graph above by calculating the area. So let's do it one more time. We now start with this equation, VF equals AT plus VI, and let's apply the rule again. We recognize that if we go to the next graph up, the area here now, this area, is now up here. It's going to represent the change in delta D. So we say delta D equals, and now we'll do the integration. We'll go A. This is T to the power of 1. Add 1, you get a 2. Divide by 2. We integrated the first term. Now let's integrate the second term recognize that vi is the same as vi times t to the power of 0. So when we integrate that, we simply go t to the power of 0 plus 1, which is 1. So vi t to the 1 divided by 1. And of course, we can now expand the left-hand side and say, df minus di equals at squared divided by 2 plus, and now we don't have to write these 1s anymore. It's kind of superfluous. And there's the t. And so now we can say df equals at squared divided by 2 plus uh, vi t plus di. And so here is my, kind of went over too far up there. This is my equation for the DT graph. So now I have the equation for all of them. Here, <coughs> here is the equation for my VT. Here is the equation for my DT graph. Okay, so to wrap things up, I have written out the uh, rule and how the rule relates to the, uh, the area relates to the change in the previous graph. Okay? Thanks.